everybody. Welcome to the Dash Trader Newsroom. Today's special report is on the CPI numbers. They came in hot and uh, inflation continues to rage. So here, uh, here we are. My name is Michael DeJoy. I'm the Director of Educational Services with Das Trader, and I'm joined by my co-host, Jill Molandrito, Global Markets Reporter from NASDAQ. And we're here at the NASDAQ Market we Site are. where they do the closing bell. We Jill, are. how are you doing today? We are, are doing really well, and it's so interesting, the market reaction. I mm -hmm. mean, we saw the initial dip when we got the CPI print came in much harder than people had expected, but the turnaround in the market is, I think, the interesting yes. move is. So it makes you wonder, okay, so, Mike, we, we know the macro headwinds. We know earnings season is coming up. We know we have midterm elections. Perhaps, perhaps this could all be discounted into stock prices because that move was was quite extreme coming yes. from, you know, the lows of the day to being up 1%, 2%. Yes. I mean, so from my perspective as a trader, when you gap down and have a big gap down, we call that a novice gap down. That means that everybody who was going to give up gave up. And then everybody was bearish. Almost all the analysts are bearish. So when everybody is bearish, that's pretty good time to be a little bit bullish, maybe for a bounce. Um, but it definitely had a feel of a little bit of a, at least a short-term washout. Um, so from my perspective, it was a, a great time if you were short to get out of your short positions and uh, to possibly take some profit. And hopefully there's, a, there's some good news ahead. Now, it, earlier in the morning, um, the British pound briefly surged, and uh, it surged against the U.S. dollar, but then it quickly receded. Now, there was some, I, I wanted to get a little bit of clarity as to what that meant. There was like a three-day notice for banks and, and, and interest rates. Do you have some clarity as to what actually happened with the British pound surging versus the U.S. dollar? I wish I was an FX expert because they have such great insight into the market, but I think there's a number of monetary policies that they have kind of um, shifted on, mm -hmm. on a dime, and I think that might have been confusing for the FX market. And I think, you know, the reversal that we also saw when you see these numbers come in so hot and we know that the Fed isn't going to dial back on their interest rate strategy here, perhaps that's why we saw the bounce in the dollar because it's kind of following the pattern as we have been um, hiking interest rates. Now, as a technical trader, I was looking at the dollar, and the dollar is up massively. It's up on the monthly, it's up on the weekly, it's extended on the daily. I mean, pretty much every technical time frame, the dollar is extended. So, I mean, from my perspective, it's just the dollar is super technically extended. And, uh, and I just don't know what the actual ramifications will be for the rest of Europe. Is this a possible indication that there may be um, other issues to come for the rest of Europe? Um, based on what the, uh, the Bank of England, now it does sort of seem to be a British problem um, that Britain has uh, some monetary issues of its own and its own individual tax strategy, but I was just uh, interested to see if this is, might be something bigger that could spread to the rest of Europe. You know, I, I would agree with you that I do think it is a little bit more UK-centric than it is necessarily EU because you had the reversal on tax policy that the Prime Minister yes, had announced. Yes, absolutely. And then you heard about um, asset purchases also this week. So there were, there were two big... Um, announcements that could move any market, but I think it kind of goes back to what we're seeing with the way stocks are trading, the way bonds are trading, the way FX is trading, the way the dollar's trading. The moves are not correlated like they normally are, and they're also very extreme. And yes. that is not necessarily the sign of a market that's kind of marching along. I don't think we're out of you know the volatility woods yet because we're no, still I getting agree. those one, two, three, four percent moves not even on the overnight, but intraday, Mike. So I, I think I mean, we can expect across crazy. all asset classes. Yeah, not a, no, no doubt there. Now, the last two items that I wanted to mention uh, for this uh, special report from the uh, Dash Trader Newsroom is the Social Security Administration announces the biggest increase in inflation um, for the cost of living increase in 40 years. It was an 8.7% increase. And also, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what happened recently in California with Gavin Newsom giving um, you know, kind of direct payment for inflation. To me, that's kind of like fighting fire with fire, giving people, um, you know, obviously a cost of living increase for uh, senior citizens. I, that makes a lot of sense. But the, what, what actually occurred in, in uh, California with Gavin Newsom giving people money to fight inflation, isn't that kind of like fighting fire with fire? That, generally doesn't go with right. economic principle. It doesn't go with economic principle. And we also have to remember, too, um, we're a few weeks out from midterm elections, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to get political about it, but the timing is is a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. a, a number of policy moves such as, you know, the federal um, um, forgive, um, what's the right word here? But, you know, federal, with, with the of, uh, people incarcerated loans. for... Oh. 
you know, marijuana. Yes. Um, we're seeing these payments being made an 8.7% increase, the conversation around student loans, and mm -hmm. it's not specific to one party or the other. There's always going to be tactics that are leveraged or around election season and so forth. So I, I think that could also be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, unless I wasn't paying attention, that's quite possible. This, this, this hike of 8.7%, I was not even aware that they were thinking about this. This is very large. It's, it's the yeah. biggest increase in 40 years. So, so what you're thinking is, and again, this leads into the last thing, is, is that we generally always have a volatility ar event around a U.S. election. This is a very, very important mm -hmm. midterm U.S. election. So your thoughts are kind of in agreement with mine that potentially these are just the typical political maneuvering that happens right before. That could be that. And then it's also going to be, you know, what are the results of it? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you don't want both, you know, House and Congress to be one party, you kind of always want that gridlock there where one occupies the other this way. You don't have the extreme shifts in mm -hmm. policy. Absolutely. And that means, you know, it means a lot for, for businesses, um, you know, regardless of your pol political views, you have to think about who controls what also does influence business decisions when it comes to regulation and, and, and policy, particularly in, in financial services. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just going to make a quick mention, um, just a, a quick uh, update. Uh, stay up to date with all things DAS by signing up to our monthly newsletter and emails. Simply fill in the form and the web page and subscribe to all of our social media outlets at Dash Trader, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thank you so much you for being it. with us yet again, and thank you for having us here at the NASDAQ Market Site. You got it. Thanks so much, Mike. Bye-bye now.